Welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Today we're doing watercolors on 300 series cold press illustration board. It's a lot of fun, it's good practice, and we'll be learning some techniques of just direct painting. Uh, nothing really advanced or anything, but it's good practice. So come on along and do some painting with this. And remember, art makes life better. Okay, first of all, let me just say thank you for being here today. We are painting on illustration board. This We've got a little bit of a grain to it, so it's going to hold the paint a little bit more. But I love the illustration board because it doesn't wrinkle. Otherwise, if you're painting on watercolor paper, you kind of tape it to your board. This way, you don't really need to tape it. Our scrap today is going to be this wonderful little lighthouse, and we'll try to make it as big as we can. We've put water in our paints about three or four drops of water in each one and it as we speak that water is soaking into the cake becoming paint so we're not we're not going to have to rub it you don't want to rub that that cake because if you do then you close off the pores and the water doesn't seep down into it you want to keep those as nice and clean as possible whenever you mix paint you do so with a clean brush and you move your paint out to your palette and then mix it. I always put one paper towel in my off hand, so it's always available, and you clean your brush on, on your paper towel. If your paints are new, there is a sizing on your brush. This sizing is, is kind of a water-soluble varnish. It keeps your, your bristles from going crazy places, um, so it's kind of like a hairspray. To get rid of that, you just dip it in your water and you, uh, you just get it wet for a couple of minutes and it'll come off. There's also sizing on your paper and on your board. So sometimes, like if you're doing something like the sky is what we're going to do first, you have to get it all wet, get rid of that sizing, and then, and then dab your color into it while it's still wet. So I'm going to teach you a couple of techniques today. Uh, the wet on wet, the, the wet on dry and then kind of a little dry brush kind of a thing where there's very little water in your brush. And as you paint along, the color will come off, but it'll be kind of grainy and um, it'll give you some tighter edges. So as we move forward, anything in the background is going to be fuzzy and anything in the foreground is a little tighter. So your shadows are darker, they're a little tighter, um, and it'll just help your perspective. So the first thing we want to do is uh, maybe section it off, do a little drawing there. I'm going to pretty much compose it like it's, it is. That rule of thirds, you've got your lighthouse in this little third section over here. And I, I like that. So I'm just going to kind of leave it the way it is. And go ahead and very lightly just draw in some things. Don't worry about clouds, uh, but the rocks, where the rocks go and where the water goes. Um, and you don't have to worry about all the little crags and things in the rocks. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but that's what I've got. And we're going to start out today with our sky. We're going to do the sky first, get the sky all done, um, and you always work back to forward, uh, especially with watercolors. Now, you could, if you wanted to, have some pencil lines and things in there to show where those clouds are. But for me, it's, it's going to be a little spontaneous. I'm just going to let those clouds do what they do. Because as soon as this picture was taken, those little clouds drifted over and new clouds took their place. And so that's, that's not a big deal. Proportioning and and size and things like that is not, not important. It's the color that's important here. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to take my other brush and uh, maybe I'll move my water up here. Is that better if I do that? Uh, I'm going to take my, my paint brush here that is just for water and I'm going to go over the entire surface of where the sky is. Now here in Utah, the air is very dry. So this has to be done very quickly. So I've got my colors, they're already ready to go. I may even want to say, well, gee, I don't, I don't much care for just blue or just purple. 
um, you may want to mix those colors before you start painting on here. So it, it's kind of up to you. I'm just going to take pure color and drop into it. So um, I, I'm just I'm ready to go. I've got my brush over here. It's ready to go. Now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put water all over here. Just just water and, and it's got got to be shiny, fairly uh, fairly thick. I'm going to try to avoid the lighthouse. And so I'm just avoiding the lighthouse. The cool thing about this board is the water pretty much stays where you put it. Now, as we're as we're moving that water around, that board is we're getting rid of the sizing. nice lots of water in there now you keep that brush kind of handy because if it dries out you think oh it's getting too dry and drop more water on it okay I told you that you had to move kind of fast so I've got I've got all this water on there it's it's kind of shiny you can kind of see that now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush and I just touched my, my paint. You only use about a quarter of an inch of your brush and just touch your paint and now you're going to drop that in and I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and let it do its thing. Don't rub it too much. Just let it do its thing. Ooh, there's some happy little clouds floating by. And usually your your landscape is lighter up at, or darker up at the top so you have more color towards the top and as you work down that pigment gets out of your brush and it gets lighter towards your horizon and that is your horizon is usually lighter anyway don't don't go over too much just let it soupy just let it do its thing we can come back into it if you want but don't be afraid to leave some areas out And the more you do it, it's going to be drying and you're going to get tighter edges. So if you think, well, I need a little bit more in my cloud there, you can go back into it. And if it needs to be wet, just drop some more water in it. And this is just pure blue. Now, if you go over it and you think, oh, that's just too much, it's too dark. You can manipulate that. You can take your your cloth and you can touch it and bring out some. Okay? I mean, there's there's lots of things that you can do here with your watercolors to help them. But don't be afraid to just let it, let it do its thing. As you paint, that paint is going to run a little bit. Well, it's still wet. I want to put a little bit of purple in that, so I'm just going to grab some purple. I'm going to dab that on top. I might even need it wet. So I'm going to just put some water back over it. And the question is, how do you know what color to use and to start with? You really don't. It's kind of a feeling, just kind of a, yeah, I feel like this is the right thing to do. But just a little purple here and there. And just, like I say, we're layering this color into it. If, it. if it gets too dry and when you layer it in, you get sharp edges, take your brush and add some water. Don't rub it too much, though. Because if you rub it too much, then it... Uh, starts looking like soup. Let it do its thing. Well, 
Watercolors also dry a little lighter than you put them on. So sometimes if you think, oh, that's too dark, sometimes it lightens up. So now I've picked out some of these light areas and I think, ooh, those look like nice clouds. I'm just gonna leave those. Some of those edges you think, well, I want I want a little darker edge in that cloud, I can do that. That purple over the blue, you know, you don't have to do it everywhere, but it, it's just a beautiful color. We're just using pure color. Also, when you're doing around your lighthouse, if you've got like a little darker area that hits your lighthouse on one side, carry it through to the other side. Don't go through your lighthouse um, because your lighthouse is white. You just got to kind of pick it up off of one side and put it on the other. And you can always come back into this and add more. It's harder to take away. So this is just, I, I needed more water in there. Because my next color, I want to do a little bit of that yellow in there. Maybe a little bit of orange. So clean, you clean your brush. Remember, you're only using about a quarter of an inch of your brush. And to clean your brush, you just dip it in the water and then dry it on your, your paper towel. And the pigment will come out of your brush. So we've got a little bit of yellow in there. Just going to dab that in there. And I'll bring that yellow all the way out until it touches my horizon line. While I have a little bit of that yellow in my in my brush, I may want to a little bit into the rocks, maybe a little bit into the lighthouse. And if you're starting to get a little bit of green in there, that's okay. Because the blue and the yellow is going to make a little green. You might even get kind of a gray if you go over some of that purple, because yellow and purple are complementary colors. It'll tone down the purple, cancel it out. And you'll get this kind of a gray, which is okay. It's a great way to make gray. So while this is still wet, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of orange right across the horizon. Just a tiny bit of orange bring it up and just let it kind of meld with that yellow and again we can do as much of this as you think we need i may we even want to and i've got tiny 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 little bit of red on my brush just a tiny bit i'm just going to hit that horizon just a little bit and bring it up into the yellow Kind of mix it a little bit. And you got to work it really wet. You want it to just kind of do its thing. It's just going to just do its thing. And so I'm going to just layer in some more color. Here's my water. I don't want to rub it, I just layer in the water, just take the water and put it out there. I'm going to layer in some more color. Tiny bit more blue.
and it's layering over that purple. And again, I'm just going to let it do its thing. And it'll fuzz out. Wherever your water is. Don't don't try to control it too much. You know, if you control it too much, then all of a sudden it it, it gets muddy. You know. Let it be a little spontaneous. Nothing wrong with a little spontaneity here. You see this one side that it got too dry, and so my colors were starting to run a little bit or to be too sharp and I wanted them to run. Just gotta go over that with some more water. Just keep taking the color and it's just a tiny little bit on your brush. The idea is to try to use as much of that color as you can. Get it off your brush, onto your, your paper. So that you don't have to clean it. There's no pigment left in your brush when you're done. This is a great technique to use for like the northern lights. Do a little painting like the northern lights. Every now and then I'll see a sky and I'll think, gosh, if I painted that sky, no one would believe it. And I'll look at it and say, the skies don't look like that. Basically, that's it. That's that's all you do for your sky. But again, keep it very spontaneous. We can always go back into it and add more if we need. That's pretty much it for the sky, really. I mean, so we've got that little bit of yellow, orange, and purpley kind of color over there. If you want your edges to be a little softer, hit it with just water, just pure water, and soften some of those edges. They do make a white paint. Um, that's it's called gouache and I have some up to the front if you think to yourself oh I, I worked this too much and got rid of my clouds and I want some light fluffy clouds in there you just use the white paint and you drop it in there but it will take on all the colors that are around it as well but it will lighten them up as it dries you think to yourself oh it's not as dark as I wanted it or you know I've lost some of that stuff you can drop more color into it later on here I'm going to I'm going to take some of that that light blue I'm going to put into some of my 
the shadows in the rocks. So I'm just going to take this water and my brush, my brush is fairly clean. There might be a little bit of blue left in there. That's okay because I'm going to be painting blue here anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into that and say, well, there's a shadow right there. And your shadows kind of run along there, here, dark shadow across there. I'm just going to take this in sections. In the Renaissance, they used to do uh, a lot of frescoes on walls and ceilings and things. And a fresco is where you take wet plaster and you paint on this wet plaster, just like this, and each section uh, the paint, as it dries with the plaster, becomes permanent. It's called a fresco. And the little sections are called giornate. And giornate in Italian means a day, which means that this is as much section that you can get done in one day. So if you look at frescoes, you can see that sometimes they even crack where they put the plaster in. But um, watercolors are kind of the same thing. You kind of go into it and you go, okay, here's a, a little section. And so I'm just dropping in color in some of that water, creating some of those craggly shadows that we had. And again, not perfect. But where the water is, you see it kind of fuzz out and do its thing. That's kind of fun. And you can do that as much as you want to. If you didn't put water in there to begin with, you're going to have little sharper edges. And you can do that too. I can, I can come down in here and I can just put in some little sharp edge kinds of things. There's a little shadow in there. And this just helps me to figure out where all that stuff goes. So I know it's going to be a little dark anyway. <clears throat> so it's almost like drying with your paint. Our air is so dry, this is going to dry very, very quickly. We can come back in. I can go over the top <clears throat> with some water, put that in there. It may touch my edges, but it, it should be okay. And I can do the light areas too. So a little bit of maybe a little bit of yellow to begin with. I already put some yellow in there, but I could do that a little bit more. Again, we want to be kind of spontaneous. Or orange, we could have done this with orange. Maybe a little purple in there too. I'm just going to crag over those purples. And as it dries, your, your edges are going to be a little stronger. So you can kind of bring some of that up and say, well, here's a little rock right there. I'm barely touching my paint. Don't immerse your brush in your paint. There's some scraggly, craggly edges. I'm, I'm only using my reference as a, as a guide, as a reference. I can I can change it. And that purple, if I if I pick up some of that yellow that's underneath, it's going to be kind of a gray, gray tone. And that's okay. And if it gets with some of the blue, it becomes that blue violet. So we're trying to get that impressionism. We we kind of look at it. And we go, what pure colors am I impressed with? That that is that pure color. And you just layer it in. And then with watercolors, they just mix themselves. Some of that background, there's some trees and things over here. I'm just going to use purple and just try to get kind of a, a tree effect, 
a bush effect. I'm just going to do little blotches and just do kind of some linear things on that side. If you wanted to add a little tree in there, you could. Happy little tree. To quote Bob Ross. You guys watch Bob Ross? Like I said, I can always add more to this. I can add a little little brown even if I wanted to go pretty dark. Um, sometimes you could add a little tiny bit of black, but we kind of try to avoid black if we can. Black is like a hole. Black is used only to get your shades. And so I'm just going along and trying to get rid of all the pigment out of my brush. And if it's, if it's dark, like this purpley gray that's in there, I'm just going to go in and do some shadows. You can touch your edges, kind of fuzz them out, soften them a little bit if you want to. I'm going to take a little bit of brown, just a little bit on some of these areas that I want to go darker. So some of these little trees back in there, just a little bit here and there. Don't need it everywhere. I'm just kind of dabbling it in and it, it'll fuzz out and do its thing. Again, you don't want to force it. Nothing works well if you force it. People don't. Paint doesn't. Again, I'm not really following the rocks. I'm kind of using them as, as guides, but being kind of spontaneous. Once I get to a point where things are doing pretty much what I want them to, I could go back into that lighthouse. If you want to get rid of something, you want to erase something, get it wet and then you can take your towel and stick it on it. Let it sit for a minute and suck up some of that pigment. You'll never get rid of all of it, by the way. That's why watercolors are kind of scary. Watercolors are probably one of the most difficult paint mediums to use. Just because it's so permanent. You lay it in, it stays there. Oil paint is easy. If you don't like it, you wipe it off. Or you paint over the top of it. Even wet, it's opaque enough that you can paint over the top of it. So a lot of people are afraid of, of oil paints, but they're probably one of the easiest of the mediums. So what we're working on here is, is kind of a uh, dry on, on dry kind of thing. I mean, it, it's slightly wet, but the drier your paint is, the sharper your edges are going to be. So when you want sharp shadows, your paint needs to be fairly dry. I don't know if you if you're noticing. I mean, as a, as an artist, especially if you're a visual learner, you kind of look at everything. Um, I'm using just not even a quarter of an inch of my brush, just the very 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 tip. That way, you don't have to clean so much of your pigment out. And uh, as you paint, most of that pigment goes off on your on your paint. Every now and then, you might need to add a little more water to your paints because they dry out.
And so as I dabble in some of this wet paint, it's going to hit those edges and it's going to fuzz a little bit. If you rub them too much, it'll, it'll become mud. So you just kind of dabble in your colors and let the edges take care of themselves. So you just kind of dabble it in. Don't, don't do too much. And you just, you're going to layer it in until it, it feels better. Having used any green, I'm, I'm not sure that there, I don't really feel much green in here. So that might be one of the colors we avoid. But you might get green because we've used a little bit of yellow and blue. I haven't really mixed anything in my palette either. My palette is very clean. My colors are clean. My water is clean. This is how you paint. So your water should be should be very clean like this. You should be able to drink it. To clean your brush, you just get it wet, let it sit in your brush, and pull out all that pigment on your paper towel. If you've if you've used your palette, you can use your paper towel to just wipe it out. Otherwise, your your color should be vibrant and beautiful. When you put your brush away, make sure that the brush is in a point. Remember, art makes life better. <laughs>